the United States Army presents an introduction to the Lance Missile System. The Lance Missile provides effective conventional or nuclear surface attack in all weather conditions, day or night. The Lance is an inertially guided medium range ballistic missile consisting of a warhead section either heavy explosive M251 non-nuclear or M234 nuclear. The main missile assemblage or MMA containing the guidance set that generates electrical commands to launch and sustain the flight phase. The propellant feed system to store and deliver fuel, an oxidizer to the rocket engine, plus various devices to ensure safe operation, and the engine system mounted on the rear bulkhead of the propellant feed system and housed in the sealed boat tail assembly, a one-piece aluminum shell that protects the engine. On the rear of this assembly are the humidity indicator, propellant leak indicator, and the purging valve. Attached to the boat tail assembly before launch are the four control surfaces. The small M30s are used with the heavy warhead, and the large M29s for the nuclear warhead. The monitor programmer, or MP, is an electronic unit used for testing and setting range information into the guidance set and controlling the firing sequence. The firing device is used for firing the lance from a remote position and the azimuth laying set orients the lance on a precise azimuth and elevation. This set consists of the GSU, the test target, and the remote theodolite. Now let's look at the vehicular equipment used to transport, load, and fire the lance. This lightweight, low silhouette, diesel-powered tracked vehicle has no armor nor is it armed. There is a cab enclosure that provides protection from inclement weather for the driver and his assistant. This vehicle, when fitted with a boom crane, is called the LT, or loader transporter. The primary function of the LT is to self-load and transport the lance, to load mated missiles or MMAs on the launch fixture, to mate or demate missile rounds, and to perform other hoisting tasks requiring a mobile boom crane. This boom crane is mounted in the cargo section of the LT. Now this same vehicle, when fitted with a launch fixture, is called the self-propelled launcher, or SPL, and is the basic vehicle for the Lance system. On improved roads, this SPL can travel up to 40 miles per hour and is capable of extended cross-country travel over rough terrain. When the rear ramp is raised and locked in position, this vehicle is watertight, so it can cross small lakes or streams. Swim vanes are used on the LT to stabilize the vehicle. When not in use, these vanes fold under the vehicle and are secured. In the cargo section of the SPL, the launch fixture serves as the platform on which the round can be elevated, traversed, and fired. The warhead support assembly provides support for the warhead section. The foam rubber seats with seat belts in the cargo area of the SPL can be raised and secured during firing operation. This same launch fixture can be converted to the system's auxiliary configuration known as the Launcher Zero Length or LZL. This change is made using a mobility kit and converts the launch fixture into a highly mobile launcher which is ground towable or air transportable. Conversion from SPL to LZL is made by using the mobility kit consisting of trailering hardware and the adaption kit. 
When the main missile assembly and warhead sections are transported in their individual containers, the Army five-ton vehicle is used. The loader transporter boom operator responds to the hand signals of the section chief, and a crew of four handlers is used to guide the canisters while suspended. You'll notice the crewmen are not wearing helmets during this operation. This is a safety requirement. The first canister to be offloaded is that of the warhead. Cables attached to the lift points on the canister are connected to a sling beam on the hook. The load is then lifted and stabilized by guide ropes. When the MMA canister is clear of the five-ton bed, the vehicle is driven out from under the canister and pulled to a position forward of the LT. The MMA canister is positioned on the ground at a right angle and to the rear of the warhead alongside the LT. Next, the end cover of the MMA canister is removed and the side bolts loosened by the crewmen. Then all six crewmen lift away the top and move it clear of the MMA and container bottom. You'll notice here that the web straps are used to lift the warhead and move it for mating to the MMA. While making electrical connections, a safety block is held between the sections to prevent hand injury. When electrical connections are completed, the block is removed and the warhead is swung into place and properly aligned to engage and tighten the swing bolts. Four bolts secure the warhead to the MMA. All four are tightened, then torqued to specifications. After mating procedures are completed, the transloading operation takes place. The missile is lifted high enough to clear the LT. You'll notice that the same web straps used to handle the warhead section are used to lift the assembled Lance missile. The crewmen who man the ropes do not guide the Lance, but only stabilize it while the boom crane maintains proper positioning. Once in position over the launch fixture in the SPL, it is lowered onto the launch truss and secured by a transport lock pin two locking arm assemblies, and the rear missile strap. Next, all guide ropes are removed, as well as the sling beam assembly. In some situations, the lance will be transloaded to the SPL in one location, then the SPL will move to a firing point. Ground guides direct the SPL onto a position over a pre-surveyed launch stake, so the towing pintle is directly over the stake. Two crew members are needed to lower the ramp, which should rest on level ground. If the ramp is not supported evenly across, it could be damaged by rocket engine blast. The SPL is now properly emplaced, and aiming equipment containers are offloaded from the SPL. Warhead straps are unfastened. The launch truss locking pin is released, and the truss is elevated to approximately 200 mils. The gunner's sighting unit, or GSU, is attached. 
Strict attention should be given to the proper securing of the mounting bolts during the installation. While the GSU is being installed, other crew members remove the rear missile strap and control surfaces are removed from their containers. These control surfaces will be installed prior to laying procedures. The short umbilical cable is connected to the underside of the MMA. This cable is attached to a longer one which electronically connects the missile to the monitor programmer and will quick disconnect from the MMA on launch. While laying procedures continue, the launcher specialist at the monitor programmer will first cycle the MP through the self-test and perform a safe arms check on the firing device to ensure that the MP and firing device are functioning properly. Crewmen now take the remote firing device a distance of approximately 100 meters to the firing pit in a low area or in a tree line if possible. With the GSU properly mounted, the gunner performs the bore sighting. The first task is to superimpose the reticles on the autocollimation eyepiece with those on the forward mirror bracket. When the reticles are superimposed, the chief verifies that the bore sighting is complete. Warhead settings are inserted and the missile is armed. Then the missile is elevated to the proper firing elevation. During elevation, the gunner watches the elevation bubble in order to tell the crew members when to stop. When the proper firing elevation of 48 to 54 degrees is reached, the gunner levels the Canton elevation level. This procedure is done by turning the hand wheel and the Cant adjusting knob. Next, the Poro prism cover is aimed toward the remote theodolite operator. The chief of section then gives the command, the missile is ready to be laid. The theodolite operator and gunner continue working together to align the two instruments until the correct deflection is achieved to properly align the missile in the direction of fire. The section chief then uses the gunner's quadrant to ensure the missile is at the exact firing elevation and relays the command zero mils to the theodolite operator who then rotates his instrument in the direction of the test target and the platoon leader verifies that the missile is laid. At this point, the monitor programmer operator cycles the monitor programmer through to the launch position while the GSU is removed from the missile and returned to its container. When the launch position is reached, the MP operator and the section chief verify a green go condition. Next, the upper rod of the APU is removed and both men move to the firing pit. After verifying that all crew members are in the pit, the countdown begins. The safe arm switch is placed in the arm position. The safe fire switch is placed in the fire position, which fires the Lance missile. The Lance missile, when deployed with the non-nuclear warhead, can be fired to a range of over 80 kilometers. This warhead contains over 800 fragmentation bomblets and is especially effective against soft semi-mobile targets such as assembly areas, POL and ammunition storage sites, large command posts, radar, and air defense installations. When used with a nuclear warhead, it has a much longer range. This introduction to the Lance system has been presented to give you an overview of the system. These scenes showing Lance vehicles, mating, loading, aiming and firing were not intended to give you specific instruction but a general knowledge of the system which should serve you well 
during your future training as a Lance Missile Crewman.